Hey friend, David here from Learn Christmas Lighting. And in this video, I want to talk about in depth how an animated Christmas light show works. Now, a lot of you guys, many people come to this channel because you see my initial video, which is like a really broad overview of how an animated light show works. And it's a helpful video if you haven't done anything with this hobby at all. If you've never lit this up, you just drove by somebody's house and you said, how does that stuff work? That video is helpful to you then. But I do get a lot of feedback on it. A lot of people who say, you know, I'm looking for a little more in depth about the pieces within and, and how they connect together and what some best practices are for making that work. So in this video, I'm going to do exactly that. Okay, so I've got a tablet right here. And what a lot of people know, and you might be in, in this uh, thought process as well, is that we've got a computer doing our sequencing, and we've got lights. But then in the middle, we have this whole host of other things that you hear people talk about. We've got controllers, we've got Raspberry Pis, we've got FPP, we've got, uh, you know, Falcon controllers, Culp controllers, stuff from Holiday Core, Alpha Pix, uh, we've got Pixlay, we've got Entech, we've got all these different brands of stuff. We've got, um, you know, networks and routers and switches. And if you're new to all this stuff, it can be really confusing. So, in this video, I want to go over exactly that um, because there are a lot of different ways, truthfully, to set this kind of stuff up, but they follow a few basic patterns. So the most basic, as we've talked about, is you've got your sequencer, you've got your lights, and, and right in the middle here, we're just going to go ahead on the lights and we're going to have a controller, okay? And the way that this all works is that the sequencer in a very in a most simple setup, which might be all you need, uh, has a network cable connected to the controller. The controller then has a power supply. Okay, so include that. PSU for power supply. And uh, power and data come together in order to go out to your lights from the controller. Okay, really that simple. What do you do if you have multiple controllers? Um, a lot of times, maybe you have a larger display. Maybe things are just really spread out. Uh, maybe you've grown your display over the years and you have multiple controllers. Well, it's actually really simple. So all we're going to do is include a network switch, okay? So we'll just have a simple box in the middle. It's going to connect to controller one. Then there's going to be a controller two, another power supply, more lights. Okay, pretty simple. Um, but what happens if maybe you go ahead and you say, okay, I want to get wireless control of my lights. I want to be able to, you know, be out in my front lawn with X lights on a laptop uh, and, and test a sequence, modify things, etc. Well, you could run a wire from this network switch that we've added that just multiplies basically the network from your computer to each controller and you could just plug a long network cable into that be out in your front lawn and be good to go or you could change that switch out and it could become a put some antennas on it a router or an ap an access point as it's known in the network biz uh, in the professional world where now it's routing between these controllers, um, a functionality that we won't use a lot on a simple closed show network, but it also has that access point functionality, the ability to go wireless. Okay, so computer connected to the switch, connected to the router, make sure our computer's connected because it wasn't at this point. Um, and so the next thing that people ask me about is they say, okay, you know, this is great. I'm in my sequence or I'm in X lights or Vixen and I'm working with my lights. I'm making sequences. I can hit output to lights in the corner and get it to show up on my lights. But what about when it comes time to play my show back? Now, one of the things that I see a lot from people is they go, oh, I need to use FPP. I need to use Falcon Player to run my show. 
and it's really not required. In fact, if this is your first year and you're just getting up to speed learning all this other stuff, I actually recommend not using Falcon Pi Player. Why? Or Falcon Player. Why? Because inside of X Lights or Vixen, there's a scheduler built right in. You can just run it off that same computer, same network setup, nothing else to set up, no other configuration. However, since a lot of people ask about it, you can, into your same network switch, do something called FPP. Sorry, I'm kind of writing it wrong. And we made that a circle here. So an FPP is just a small microcomputer. Actually, there's literally one right back here. This one's a Raspberry Pi. There are also the Beagle Bone ones. I'm not going to go into right now uh, pros and cons of those, um, uh, but they both run. They both can run your show. And the benefit of one of these guys is it frees up your computer to be, you know, your computer, <laughs> right? And so you don't have to dedicate it to your show every night. Also, if you have one that has a clock built into it, a clock battery, um, basically the FPP, if you lose power, will just restart automatically, be back on that schedule, etc. They also can get a network-based time. Uh, so there's a couple advantages to it, but they're not major advantages. And so for people on their first year, I say, you know, don't worry about these. Um, but if you are getting into that, you want to use one, um, maybe there's a couple. Another reason why is if you have your FM transmitter mounted up in an attic, um, you could put your FPP up there with your FM transmitter, um, and then it would play the audio off of the FPP device instead of having to have a computer maybe running a long cable for the audio, um, which can be problematic at, at certain distances, etc. So FPP gets added in. We're just going to plug that into our network switch or router, okay? And then it's going to be able to talk the same way the computer talked based on a schedule with the scheduler that's built into the FPP software and be able to play your show back, okay? And so that's really it. Um, as setups grow, you know, one of the things you'll see is a lot of these controllers, you'll use a long range controller, whether you've got a Falcon, an F48, whether you've got an Advitech Pixlite, uh, whether you've got a Culp controller, there are what they call the receiver ports or the differential ports that allow you to send data long distances over network cables and be able to output there. Now, these add to our show pretty simply. They're just an extension of an existing controller. So we literally, you know, we've got our second controller here. We go ahead, and if we have long-range ports, you know, it's just a long-range port. Uh, so it has a network cable coming out of that controller, goes a long distance, uh, up to a couple hundred feet at least. And then we're going to have a power supply there. So we'll write PSU. Yes, you all know now how messy my handwriting is. And then there's lights. And that's really it. it. It really doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. Uh, one of the things I do see every year uh, when I look at this basic layout and, and I talk to folks is sometimes people try to overcomplicate things. And so if you are making your first setup this season, I know we're well into the like crunch time uh, for this year. This is 2020 when I'm making this. You know, if you're getting overwhelmed, um, take a minute, look at this diagram here and see how you can simplify. At the end of the day, um, keeping things off your home network, keeping a simple setup like this is going to be a lot simpler to set up. It's going to be easy for when you run your show and it's just going to be a whole lot less complicated. I can't recommend it enough. Awesome. If you've enjoyed this video and you enjoy the videos that we have here, uh, be sure to subscribe here on Learn Christmas Lighting and check out Learn Christmas Lighting Academy. You can find more about it in the links below this video. So great to have you here and we'll see you in our next video. Merry Christmas.